Fred Hughes Show, and I am Fred Hughes, and I'm just welcoming all that are um, pitched in tonight and uh, just excited about uh, uh, Word of God that I've got for, for you. And I uh, just wanted to, uh, as a matter of uh, just kind of encouragement, uh, we really, really need people to ring the little bells and uh, um, join us and uh, do, you know, do the little things that uh, that put um, an emphasis on, you know, um, share and um, that sort of thing, share. That really does, you know, boost the... Um, um, ability for the logarithm to kind of boost us and, and get us out there. And, and uh, so it's really important uh, if you can share on your website or whatever uh, our broadcast, it's always good. And we have exciting folks that come through. And so uh, it's all going good. I'm a little in disarray tonight as far as my studio goes. Uh, we're putting a new floor in. And so all my furniture is on one side of the room and so I'm a little off balance here, but uh, uh, maybe this little webcam will get us through this particular session. And um, last week I had kind of a, a little cold come uh, come upon me a little bit, and I'm still wrestling with that just a little bit. So uh, bear with me if you will. I want to talk about something that I think is really, really relevant uh, in our particular time period. Um, you know, it, it's really an unusual time that we live in. And there's there's lots of things that are going on, some of them good, some of them not so good. And uh, we seem to be kind of headed to some, some um, difficult times, perhaps. Um, but we don't need to be walking in fear. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of formats for fear. And what I want to talk about tonight is really the fear of man, uh, because for some reason, we seem to have a, a difficult time uh, not having everybody like us and happy with us. And, you know, that's quite impossible to do in the first place. So I don't really understand why we think we can manufacture that, make that happen. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> but the fear of man, fear of what other everybody says, fear of um, what people will think of us, what people will say about us, and really what that boils down to is that bo actually boils down to um, a word that's maybe a little more severe. It's called persecution. So nobody really likes to be persecuted for what they what they believe. They you know, and a lot of times. We don't stand up because we are, have this fear of men or a man or have this fear of being persecuted for what we do say. So it's an interesting uh, topic. And I think if, if you've been around a while, uh, you kind of can n take note of the fact that today um, things are getting black and white. They're not there's not so much middle gray out there anymore. And uh, so a lot of a lot of my lifetime anyway, you could kind of get lost in the, in the in-between and kind of hide out in there and not really step into a whole lot of being identified and labeled and marked as, you know, this or that. But today that's, that, that line seems to be merging together closer and closer, and that uh, wall of gray in between seems to be uh, fading quickly. So I don't know that it's a good good or bad, but either, either way, you're going to have to choose what side you're going to be on. And so if you're calling yourself a Christian, uh, you're going to have to stand up and, and act like a Christian. If you're calling yourself, you know, something else, well, then... Stand up and represent that, I suppose. But uh, I really don't think that there's going to be a lot of um, wishy-washy, I don't know what you are. And so with that in mind, I just kind of want to encourage you a little bit uh, tonight with, with just a brief word. First um, <clears throat> Peter 5, 7 
is, is, is a really good one. And, you know, um, it, it says, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. And um, I, I think one of the uh, NIV version, it says, cast your anxieties on him because he cares about what you care about. And <clears throat> anxiety and worry, those are, those are things that it, it, they're actually meditation uh, on, on the good side of things. If we meditate on the word and we put that in us, it'll, it will cause us to think the right kind of thoughts. It will, if we read the word, it will, it will put good things into us. On the other side, if we're into worry and fretting and, and um, anxiety about things, it'll produce bad things in our life. And, Right now, the health issues have, have kind of the the world is is kind of seeing the results of a lot of people. Really, the anxiety is 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 really getting to. The Bible says that in the last days, men will will men's hearts will melt or they will faint, and uh, so I think we're in that end times period. Actually, so we have we have a little challenge. We don't realize how how effective the um, the pressure is upon us when we worry and fret and and walk through life in fearfulness. And anxiety comes a lot from being fearful of what a man will do, of what a person will do, to what a group of people might uh, might press upon you. And there's there's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. I, I, I was watching the evening news, and and was just uh, this lady Carrie Lake. Uh, she ran for a ticket or whatever, but evidently somebody um, from her party came, approached her, and and flat out, you know, asked her what she would sell out for, and uh, you know, name your price type thing. And it's like. How do you stand up against somebody like that? They know they've been emboldened because uh, what's around them is so powerful and what's around them is so evil right now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, wickedness in the government. And if you're trying to be a healthy, upright person uh, and you're approached in such a manner, you know, what are you going to say? Uh, you're going to stand up and say, no, I'm not going to sell out no matter what your price is and, or I am going, uh, or, or you're going to yield to that and, and, um, succumb to, you know, the pressure of the day. And so there's some great things. I can imagine that that would be a great amount of pressure on a person. President, uh, Trump has gone through all of these things that they've gone through in, in his family trying to get here. It happens on both sides of the uh, of the uh, deal. Uh, every time President Biden is falls and 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 you know, I mean, he faces this fierce barrage of of uh, you know people looking at him and, and and saying you know he needs to be thrown out or something you know. And it, so it really doesn't make any difference, you know, who you are. You're going to face persecution. In fact, the Bible kind of promises us that in this life, in this life, there's going to be persecution. Uh, there's going to be people that put pressure on us, and so now is the time to kind of prepare yourself for those kind of moments because we need to have an answer. We need to have already determined some hard facts, some pat answers, some solid responses when we step into the face of something of, of, of this fear of man. And so it's really, really important. I mean, I mean, let me just say this fear is activates what Satan does. It releases his power and the same in the same way, uh, faith releases God's power and release, releases his um, um, activity in your life. And so it's time to try to choose between fear and faith because they work exactly in the same way and they're empowered by the same thing. So it's 
faith in reverse or faith going forward, um, faith or fear. You know, it's, it's, they're, they're almost identical, except one comes from one kingdom, and the other comes from a different kingdom. And so we have to kind of choose, choose ye this day whom you will follow. And so, you know, God created us for relationships. He doesn't want us hiding in the background and not, not fellowshipping with other people. We're, we're created to have fellowship. We're created to, to be a social people. And so whenever uh, you start getting alienated or pushed aside or oppressed by uh, something where you have, have, have to function and operate full-time in fear, then uh, you, are, you are made to be something that you're not made to be. And so it's going to be hard on your health. It's going to be hard on your relationships or the other relationships. And it's going to be really, really hard for you to stand up and, and have a presence uh, that is um, admirable. So, you know, you can continue flying but below the radar for a while. But I, I, like I said, I believe things are getting black, blacker and whiter. And I think there's going to be more and more difficult to kind of remain anonymous. Um, I think you're going to have to stand up and uh, be called out um, for who you are and what you believe and what you stand for. And so it's time to kind of buckle up and get, get prepared because, my friend, it's coming. It's coming. You're going to face it. So, <clears throat> you know, that scripture I quoted a while ago, First uh, Peter 5, 7, it, it says to cast your cares, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. In uh, the NIV, it says cast your anxieties. And um, um, uh, I would say cast your worries. You know, what are, what are you fretting about, whatever you're concerned about. So it's, it, it's a, that's a powerful scripture, and it kind of, Walks walks you into another one that I think is really good. All you know, if if you give all your worries and cares to God, well then uh, it, it says He He cares for you, and so He He will take the burden of the cares and the worries, um, and put you in peace. He'll give you peace for in exchange for what for you handing Him your your fearfulness and your worries and your burden. And um, at this particular junction, I think it's really important that we stay alert because uh, another scripture that um, points out, you know, that your enemy uh, is going about looking for someone who can, whom he can devour. And um, it, uh, that scripture, is so um, it says, who, who will allow, you know, whom he may, in other words, you, you have to kind of give him permission, but if if he may do it, he will devour you. He will he will come and get you. You know, in the the very job description of of the enemy himself is that he will come and steal, kill, and destroy any you know your life, everything about it, and in it. So we've got to stand firm against him and be very strong in our faith strong in our, um, you know, desire to be somebody in his kingdom, uh, to represent the kingdom of God rather than represent, you know, the, the earthly kingdom. So when we, you know, start doing what God called us to do, <clears throat> basically what, what, when we stand up and we take a side Basically, what we do is we paint a big target on our on ourselves. Uh, we become a target. We become identified, and therefore classed or put into, you know, grouped out, so that people can take pot shots at us or whatever, and identify us as being a, you know, white Christian nationalist or, or whatever, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of little throw outs that go around that <clears throat> kind of are meant to be uh, derogatory. Uh, the very word Christian itself is little Christ. 
and it was meant to be very, very derogatory uh, in the beginning whenever it was kind of pulled out. So the fear of man brings a snare, um, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Not saved, but safe. I think that's good. That's Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. That's quite a picture. Uh, if, we, if we fall into the, this fear of other people and what they're saying about us and what, they, what they're trying to do to us, uh, then we're, it's like being snared. We've been caught in their trap if we um, allow it to, to take hold of us, to overcome us, uh, to bring fear into our life. It's a powerful verse that, that we kind of need to think about a little bit, going like, I don't want to step in a, the, the enemy's snare. I don't want to be overcome with, with fear because I know it's not going to produce anything that's good in my life. And so I want to get out of fear and into faith in what God has for me. So therefore, I need to make a move to the Word of God. I need to be studying it. I need to be uh, putting it into my life and being very intimate with uh, with the Lord Jesus to to learn more about His voice, to learn more about His will, to put things in order that um, that are powerful in my life and in my leadership and in and in whatever role I play. Uh, because I need to be able to stand up. I need to know who I am, and I need to know who. Uh, what I'm capable of in Christ Jesus. And uh, so it's very, very important that we make these stands, that we, you know, the, the, there's one script, scripture that talks about, you know, be very courageous and, you know, be, uh, don't, he was talking, uh, Gideon was one of the guys he was hiding and, you know, and, and the Lord calls him out and be very bold and very courageous, you know, and, Stand up and be the man that God made you to be. Sometimes I, we just don't have that good a view of ourself. And so it's kind of a little difficult sometimes for us to step into uh, being who we really have not ever, you know, maybe God told us that's who we are, but we've never walked in it yet. So it's important that we do that. So when Christians do not speak the truth, then we... Um, kind of open the door for the enemy to take over. And if we are fearful of an argument, fearful of being able to contend for what is true, well, then we come across if, if, uh, as, as passive or path, path, path of us, uh, you know, just weaklings. <coughs> and that's not who we are. We have great authority and great power in the kingdom of God as we are sons and daughters of God. And uh, those that oppose us and walk in, in lies, those who uh, want to live immoral lives and they do not want to, you know, um, line up with the word of God at all, uh, they're, they're the ones that's going to pay the price of, of you know, they're, they're there, there is a consequences uh, for living that lifestyle. And so they will eventually face that. And like I said, uh, that fear is one of those things that, that works on the inside of us and really um, steals our health from us. And uh, so it's, it's maybe one of the more simple things. But, um, you know, if we stand up and say, well, you know, some of these things that um, that people are wanting the government to approve and that are clearly not part of what God says he approves of, uh, then we've got to make a moral stance. You know, to stand up and say, listen, homosexuality is a sin, uh, period. Uh, it's just plain and simple. That's what the Bible calls it. That's what it is. And, you know, you can argue with me and tell me, you know, whatever you want. But the Word of God says it's not not me. I mean, somebody really a lot 
higher up the ladder than me is saying this. And so, you know, if we're afraid to, to admit we're part of that kingdom, and yes, we believe it's a sin, and stand on the morality that needs to be part of our country uh, rather than the, um, the loss of that morality that we have just thrown out the window, you know, over time and uh, began more and more and more people again participating in such things that are not good. Uh, our health, uh, it produces lots of health issues. It, it, there's, there's ramifications for it. There's, there's penalties and prices to pay uh, when you lead that kind of lifestyle. And um, so if, if we, we, we need to love people enough to tell them the truth, and then it's their um, opportunity then to either accept the truth or to reject it. But it's not my um, responsibility to get into agreement with them and not tell them the truth. Um, I, I'm making a choice for them. I'm not showing them the truth. I'm making a tro- choice in, in telling them, well, I agree with you. I guess I guess you just need to go do what you need to do. And um, so, you know, there's some, there's some stances that are going to have to be made. And like I said, Black and white's getting more, more and more black and white. The gray area is fading away, and there's there's kind of some battle lines being drawn, and uh, you're gonna have to get on one side or the other. You can't stand out there in the middle because there's fixing to be some some uh, fireflies, you know. So anyway, uh, the scripture that I'd kind of like to put up and um, give you a little. Let me see if I can find my deal here. <clears throat> There's a scripture in in uh, First Kings, and it it's um, chapter seventeen, verse one. <clears throat> Just says it, um, it's talking about Elisha. It says Elisha, the t- Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab. Now, Ahab was an evil king. Uh, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these days, these years, except at my word. Now, a little bit of background. Uh, Ahab, the king, had... He'd been killing, he had recently been killing prophets that were standing up and telling the truth. So Elijah was taking his life into his own hand. And his word was pretty strong because, um, you know, I mean, if you kill me, um, the drought's never going to go away, you know. So he he's kind of putting a heavy on this king for sure. He said, when the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide at the brook uh, Karen, which flows from uh, into the Jordan. And and then, and you know, the, the story of, you know, it's kind of he drank from the brook until it finally dried up. And then he had to kind of come back into town. So he, he actually, you know, was very brave to stand up in front of this king and uh, risk his life, honestly. And, um, and then he was led by the Lord to a safe place and kept there and provided for, um, for a duration of time. And then things dried up and he had to kind of come back out and bring the rain back in and do some other stuff. It's quite an interesting story, but, um, at, at no point in the whole deal was he able to, you know, stay in the gray area. <laughs> he was, and I think that's kind of a little bit uh, like what we're going to experience in, in the coming days because I, I, I just believe that there's going to be some stepping out and saying, hey, this is the way that God is leading us and we're having, we're, we're, we are experiencing 
a renewal and a revival. And, uh, uh, you know, I believe, honestly, I believe the, the third great awakening is here. And I believe that there's going to be a, a renewed interest in the things of God. And I believe there's going to be a great turning toward God and, and a great harvest that's going to come uh, during these days. But there's also going to be a great falling away. And there's going to be opportunity for you to go either way. Opportunity for you to influence the people that you're around. And so you have to be willing to tell them the truth so that they can make a, a choice between the truth and some or and something else. Uh, don't, you know, be responsible enough to be able to say, you know, I, I told you the truth. And it doesn't really matter what they say back to you. Um, it's not going to, it's not going to, uh, be their their downfall or upbringing, either one uh, possibly. But uh, if it does, if it changes their mind and they miss he they miss hell and make heaven, uh, then you'll have a friend forever. That's for sure. And uh, if they don't, then it's you know it's their choice. And so we're going to have to learn that the truth is true, and it's not going to change. And, you know, society may decide that that the, that old truth uh, isn't the new truth. We're going to go with the new truth. We're making up some stuff that we like, and this is going to be a better truth for us. And we this is this is how we're going to choose to, choose to uh, live our life. Listen, um, humanity's been doing that from day one. But, you know, it, it this is no new thing. But the intensity of it, I believe, in these last latter days is going to get pretty hot. And so you better know where you're going to stand. You, had a, you better put some, some thought into, uh, if you're called out on a question, what are you, how are you going to respond? Are you going to tell them the truth? Or are you going to mealy mouth around and, and try to stay out of trouble, try to stay, you know, fly under the radar and, uh, and be just a, a good old guy? a sweet little lady, um, you know, somebody everybody likes. Are you going to be one of those Christian nationalists? <gasps> wow, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm kind of getting on, on it, but uh, nevertheless, these, these are days that I believe are going to get a little, a little more bold. And we're going to have to be willing to face face up to it and and be and stand up and be known of who we are. So who are you? Do you know yourself? And so I just want to kind of pray over over the whole group here because I believe that you know we need to get over being uh, afraid of being politically incorrect or whatever. Most people uh, won't stand up and speak on morality very much, but are you willing to, if God says, if God says, stand up and, and make a statement here, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to obey him? One of the main reasons I think people uh, don't <clears throat> is just the pressure that uh, fear of man, this fear of being persecuted. And listen, persecution is going on around the world, and it's getting pretty heavy duty in, in a lot of places. So are you facing, are you willing to face uh, some really strong opposition in what you believe? So will we limit God in, in, in what he can do through us? Will we put a restriction on, I'll go that far, but I won't go further than that. You know, are we going to start saying to God, um, you know, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll give money to a cause, but I'm not going to go get my hands wet, you know, dirty, whatever. So there's, there's some powerful uh, decisions, I think, that's in front of every believer right now. And uh, we need to begin to make, you know, have the, 
have the um, intentionality of knowing what we're going to say when we're faced with some of these things. If you're pressed into a corner, what are you going to say? And so can you, um, can you turn to God and say, God, you're enough. You're all I need. I trust you completely. I cast all of my cares on you because I know you care about me. And I trust you. I know that you will speak to me. I'm your sheep. It says says, my sheep know my voice and no other voice will they follow. I'm going to follow your voice, Lord. And I'm excited about doing so. And so I would just uh, encourage you in, in all of all of those things. If we don't, if we don't learn, you know, learn to lean on Jesus, um, we're going to be by ourselves. And in fact, I would even go to so far of, as to say some people. A lot of a lot of times, the reason we're fearful is that we're following other people. <clears throat> and trying to protect ourselves uh, by by following and being a part of another crowd or another a group uh, and identifying with with somebody. But I'm telling you, if you're leaning on somebody else, then you're leaning on somebody that's going to let you down. You know, possibly lead you off in the wrong direction. If you're leaning, the only one you're leaning on is Jesus. And you're going to be way ahead of the rest of the crowd. And so I would just put my faith in him and I would lean on him. I would, I would um, lean on the truth, error in the true, in the realm of truth, rather than uh, lean on somebody else and what they might say, even if they're a good leader, even if they're powerful, you know, evangelist or, or pastor or teacher or some, some way, they even, they're they're wearing if they're wearing an earth suit they can get into error and so you're going to have to you if you're born again you have the ability to talk directly to holy spirit and he has the ability to speak directly to you why why would you want to lean on somebody else why would you he knows all things he knows everything. And he said, he gives you everything that you need for life and godliness. Another scripture in John, uh, 1 John 4, 17 says, as he is, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. <coughs> if you're a follower of Christ, you have the same attributes that he had while he was walking around on this earth. You had the Holy Spirit, his spirit, you have it living in you, and you can hear his voice, and you can follow him by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit, not by the five senses. The five senses are great. We can, we can use them, but we don't completely depend on just that because we have to walk by faith, by faith. And faith is not something you can... Put your hands on, feel it, touch it, taste it. It it doesn't come that way. It comes through your spirit. And so you have to step into the spiritual realm, get born from above so that you have the spirit of God indwelling you so that you can hear his voice, so that you can follow after the truth and do the right thing every single time. Because that's, that's what a Christian does. We're... We're forgiven. We're not perfect. We're forgiven. And that makes a huge difference. So let me just uh, pray for you and uh, thank God for you. Everybody that, uh, that, is, that, that has, has an earth suit right now has a golden opportunity in this world to make a huge difference. And so it's time for Christians to identify, stand up and be counted, but be ready to be given great and powerful tools to be able to complete what God has in mind. Because he's still the God that parts red, parts seas and moves mountains and 
does all that miraculous stuff that's in the Bible, he still does it. He hasn't he hasn't uh, laid all that down. He hasn't thrown that out the window. And my friend, you're going to be one that can walk in that in these days because great power is going to be released in this earth. There's a lot of work to do, and there's a mighty, awesome God that wants to do it through you. And there's a great enemy in the earth that uh, is, is trying his best to bring it all down. And so it, it's battle time. <laughs> We're in a war, like it or not. And there's going to be great changes and upheavals and differences. And I'm just telling you, get ready, buckle up, uh, but don't lose sight of the truth and don't lose sight of the God that indwells in you and empowers you because he loves you. Father, I just thank you for everybody uh, that's listening here, that uh, that tunes in even later after the our regular broadcast is, is over. And Father, I just thank you so much that uh, you are the answer. You're the one that can, um, you're the one that we need to fear, not man. No man should we fear whatsoever, but we should just fear the living God. And we just thank you so much, Lord, because you give us power to get wealth when we need it. You give us power to heal the sick, cast out demonic spirits, uh, walk in, uh, in, in, in full authority and, uh, and represent you and your kingdom in this earth. And so, Father, we just thank you that we're not of this earth, but we are living in it right now, and we are here for a reason. As long as we have an earth suit, we have the opportunity to spread the, the joyful good news of the gospel. And I just pray for everybody. I pray for healing. I pray for um, provision. I pray for health. I pray for uh, just um, new joy and a recognition of who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Listen, I've got, uh, we've got a prayer line, and uh, let me put that up on the screen here, uh, our prayer hotline. is uh, 806-340-0111. Uh, let me say that again, 806 806- Three four zero zero one six two, and uh, you have somebody standing by. You might even get me. I I, I I jump on there every once in a while. So um, we like to pray uh, over anybody and get into agreement with you. Um, we have English and Spanish speaking uh, people that answer the phone. So um, we try to just stand ready to to pray with you and agree with you and. You can ask questions, and we answer them best we can. If we don't know the answer, well, we try to find it out and get back to you. So you have a blessed day, and um, join us again next Thursday and every Thursday at 7 o'clock right here on Facebook or on, on any of the places that we go live. Uh, we have uh, YouTube, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, and um, some more. What is it? Um, anyway, um, yeah, I said YouTube. Anyway, <laughs> there's four, there's four different places that we get. Oh, Twitter. There we go. Twitter or now then, I, what do they call it? X or whatever. <laughs> so, so anyway, we just, uh, once again, we bless you and we'll say bye for now. Bye-bye and uh, join us again next week.